Section 7.2.1, Recon with Who Is, Part 2. What does swatting have to do with cybersecurity since the activities happen in real life? The connection to cybersecurity is how does the swatter get the address information of their victim? What are the cyber reconnaissance tools that are used? Many swatting incidents begin with an online interaction like gaming, social media, or email, which will also have some cybersecurity components. But for now, we are concentrating on how the swatter finds the physical address of their victim. Think about it with this scenario. You are in a gaming or social media environment. You want to find another member's address. The only information you have is they have a website called GameRanks.com. What are some ways to find someone's real name and address if they are a complete stranger, like in a gaming forum? What are some OSINT sources you can use to gather this information? In this situation, you may believe it's possible to use a person's IP address to trace them, but that is not true. Your computer gets an IP address from the internet service provider, and they will only provide to law enforcement information dealing with who was assigned that IP address. So what other ways can we find that information? Using just the website domain name, the Who Is lookup tool will provide information that can be used for multiple types of attack. They can find website admin's name and email address, which can be used for phishing attacks. You can find a phone number, which can be used for smishing attacks. Or a physical address can be used with Google Maps for OSINT to perform social engineering attacks or to confirm whether this is a home or business. The attacker can then use this information for a swatting attack. Because the Who Is tool relies on public information about a website, we first need to define some terms like domain name, website, and URL. A domain name is the unique string of characters used by an organization to identify their internet-based resources. It must follow a specific format and must be globally unique. Domain names are set up with your unique domain name, dot top level domain. For example, we have cyber. Cyber is the domain name with .org as the top level domain. This means if you want to use cutedogs.com, then you must first research to see if that domain name is already taken. Cute dogs probably already exists in the .com top level domain, but you may be able to register the name in .net or another top level domain. One thing to be aware of is that a domain can contain several websites. Top level domains include .com, .edu, .gov, .military, and countless more. But they can also indicate a country code, like .uk for United Kingdom, .it for Italy, .au for Australia, and many more. As of February 2023, there was 1,481 different top-level domains. A fully qualified domain name also includes a host server section. You will see this often with help pages or library pages for schools. Even just having the www will indicate that the site is a fully qualified domain name. Cyber.org has an example of this with their range. You can access the range by going to apps.cyber.org 
apps.org, which is considered a fully qualified domain name because apps is the host name of Cyber, which is the domain name. A website can be just one HTML page, or a website can be hundreds of pages created using many types of code. But no matter what, all website resource paths start with the domain name. The Uniform Resource Locator, or URL, is where it all comes together to be the web address that most people recognize. This is what we type in the browser address bar. When you link to an open resource, you are using the resources URL with a protocol, then your domain name, followed by the top level domain, and finally your page path. These terms are key to how the internet is organized. When you create a website, and buy your own domain, you must provide contact information that goes into a searchable database. This person is responsible for the domain in case questions like paying renewal of fees for domain name or legal questions come up. Before you start working with your website, your pre-step will be to purchase an IP address from your internet service provider or ISP, or an online hosting service. Sometimes these are built into a website service and is paid for with your domain name registration and service fees. Then the real first step is to register your properly formatted domain name and IP address with an internet registrar like GoDaddy or Network Solutions. There are many options for who you can register through. They enter your domain name and IP address into the database to determine your top level domain like .com, .net, .edu, or .org. Once you are registered, anyone can put your domain name into a browser and it will be translated into the correct IP address and the world can see your great website. The domain name system, or DNS, is the last piece in the internet database puzzle, which will be covered in a future lesson.